on to our um, planning and zoning articles, and I'd like to do what we um, did, what I thought was successful last year, and they, these articles appear at 2 through 8, and I'd, I'd entertain a motion to consider articles 2 through 8 as a group. I have a second to that, seconded by Mr. Bridal. Um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Bridal was the first. Do I have a second? Um, Mr. Griffin is the second. And uh, the purpose of this is to allow our um, uh, Jason Bashan from the Planning Department to speak to these as a whole, and you'd be able to ask questions, um, but I think this will be a more efficient way um, to, uh, to address them. We did it this way last year, and I thought successfully. All those in favor of dealing with these articles as a group, raise your voter cards. Thank you. Down cards. Um, any opposed? We'll take them as a group, and in that spirit, I would entertain a motion to waive reading of Articles 2 through 8 in their entirety due to their length. Do you have a motion? Does that affect Mr. Griffin? Seconded by Mr. Bridal. All those in favor of allowing me not to read those uh, articles, thank you. Down cards. Any opposed? Uh, Mr. Bashan, you have the floor, and I um, asked you uh, to come forward and um, assist us with an explanation of Articles 2 through 8. And um, I also want everyone to know that the full text of these amendments, these proposed amendments, are in the hall. Uh, they're on easels so that you can avail yourself and look at um, the full amendments. And um, Jason, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much. Um, good morning, Jason Bashan, Town Planner. Um, what I have before you is a total of seven proposed zoning amendments, as noted, Articles 2 through 8. All of these articles were uh, recommended by the Planning Board through the public hearing process. Um, in addition to being in the hallway, these amendments are also available on the town website as well. So afterward, if anybody wants to check that out, I just wanted to make sure that's noted. Um, I'm going to begin with Article 2. I'm going to add a few extra points to this particular slide in addition to the purpose and overview that I'm going to provide for all of them because of um, significance of this particular article. Article 2, the purpose is to establish regulations for accessory dwelling units to single-family dwellings. As an overview, this article was prepared in response to Senate Bill 146, which was signed into law in March of 2016. Um, that's RSA 674 colon 71 through 73. Any community that has not adopted um, zoning for ADUs by June 1st of 2017 of this year must allow an attached accessory dwelling unit in any single family zoning district with only a building permit, which would mean there would be no local standards. Uh, the proposed article provides the necessary local safeguards, including a definition of accessory dwelling unit, related modifications under Article 6 for parking to um, provide for compliant parking with the zoning ordinance, and Article 7, exterior design, which means that any accessory dwelling unit added to a single family dwelling can't change the look and feel of the single family dwelling itself. And also new Article 3A, which provides specific local requirements for the permitting and construction of ADUs. And as I said, I just wanted to expand a little bit on this one and cover what's under the permitting construction in our local requirements. They include, but not limited to, a conditional use permit being required from the planning board. No more than two bedrooms, no less than seven by 10, and no, or no less than seven by 10, no more than 200 square feet owner occupancy of one of the units, the primary or the ADU. The detached ADU um, may be permitted if the structure predates this ordinance when it's adopted. An 800 square foot maximum size of the ADU. Adequate water and sewer availability that are shared between the primary unit and the ADU. Compliance with the dimensional requirements and a procedure for removal. There are other requirements, but those are some of the ones I wanted to touch upon here. And this is the product of many months of work by the planning board at its regular meetings. And um, we received some valuable feedback at those public meetings from the public. We had invited them to speak to these, um, this proposed amendment, and we got some feedback in drafting this amendment. Um, this is something that's been mandated by the state, and the ADUs will be permitted regardless of the vote in March. Um, so a vote in favor of this article will ensure that ADUs are established in a manner that protects single-family neighborhoods and does not um, unduly burden the town's resources and infrastructure. So it's an important article from that perspective. It was something that was mandated by the state. So I just wanted to go a little bit extra on that. So, but I'm going to go into Article 3 now. Uh, do we have any questions on Article uh, 2? As Jason said, this is coming no matter what happens on March 14th. And a yes vote on Article 2 is an opportunity to allow the town to um, to regulate it and impose standards on it. And a, and a no vote would allow um, 
an ADU to be constructed in any single family residence just by getting a building, just permit. A building permit. So right. the dimensions, uh, the, the requirements that we usually would impose wouldn't, wouldn't be in play. So.